Hi, this is Teo from Pucklebox.com. Today I want to show you my watercolor palette, my main one, which consists of Daniel Smith watercolors. I will talk about the colors that I have and also show you some of the sketches that I've painted with these colors. So let's start. Daniel Smith watercolors are sold in 15ml tubes like this. They are also available in the smaller tube forms in 5ml. Uh, you can buy all the tubes separately individually or sometimes they also come with specialty sets that you can buy For example, this one is from the Primatex set which they created from uh, precious gemstones uh, When I first bought this, I also bought an empty watercolor palette box So uh, this palette box has uh, space for 12 pens the pens are empty, I just squeeze the pins into the pen. Each pen is about 2 ml in capacity, so I can fill the pens about 7 times with uh, the large tube. It's quite economical in the long run uh, if you do it this way. But one thing to note is that <clears throat> some colors uh, they do not reactivate well with water, but all the colors here work very well. The odd one out that I know of is Viridian, so avoid that color. Let's take a look at all the colors that I have. Um, the colors that I choose, I chose it in um, a theme which has a warm and cool version of each uh, primary color. So we have Lemon Yellow, New Gun Bosch is the cool, is the warm. Quinacridon Red, Quinacridon Magenta, French Ultramarine, Taylor Blue, Sap Green, Permanent Brown, Italian Burnt Sienna uh, This one is also French Ultramarine, almost used up And recently I added a few more colors like Transparent Pry Pyro Orange Transparent Brown Oxide Soda Light Genuine And Permanent Alizari Crimson Now Alizari Crimson, they have two, they are, they have two versions get the one that is permanent because this is light fast and will not fade with light initially I also bought uh, Viridian um, but as I have said Viridian is a color that will turn into a hard rock when it's when it's squeezed out into the pans like this and after it becomes a rock it's very hard to rewet it and use it again so now I will have switched on to switch to uh, Taylor Green. Let me uh, show you some color charts. This is a color chart uh, painted not using those colors, just a selection of the colors. And in this case, I use Hansai Yellow instead of Lemon Yellow. So this is the chart. Colors are very vibrant and I really love the that they are so they look so saturated. This is made out of how many colors? Ten colors. So with ten colors you can get a very nice uh nice range of mixtures. And this is a mixture of uh, 15 colors. Uh, these all these colors are actually from Jane Blundell's ultimate mixing palette I will post a link to the uh, palette in the description below this video so you can take a look if you want to get the, those colors as well uh, 15 colors they have an even bigger range compared to my 10 colors obviously so let me just show you some mixtures Let me just show you some of my favorite colors from this particular palette. Uh, lemon yellow is one of it. I use a lot of yellow mainly to mix a green color. Then we have the gamboche which is a strong nice orange. This is also transparent. All my colors are transparent. On hindsight actually I, th I wish that I have not bought the orange because you can mix orange very easily from yellow and red and I have three reds here so I can get a variety of orange just from the three reds and one yellow the red that I like is actually transparent pyro orange it's a warm red 
Why I like it is because it mixes very nicely with uh, Taylor Blue to give you a very dark uh, shade of color. This is Taylor Blue. It's a very bright blue that you cannot use, that you do not use normally on it. So you need it to, you need it to be neutralized, which I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to mix a um, transparent pyro orange and Taylor blue. So you get a very um, dark shade. The more you add it, the the more paints you add, the darker it becomes, and I like to use this to go into uh, to paint very dark areas. So this is really very uh, nice mixture. The other color is of course French Ultramarine. Everybody likes French Ultramarine. It is a very versatile color as well. For French Ultramarine, I normally mix it with um, Burnt Sienna. So I'm going to mix uh, Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna now. This will give you a, also a very nice uh, gray color as well. I like to use this for clouds. You can just adjust how much ultramarine there is to determine how, how moody you want the clouds to be. And next up is uh, sap green. Sap green is a very nice, cheerful uh, green. You can make sap green from lemon yellow and phthalo blue, but I prefer it to use a convenient mixture in this pen form because it's more, uh, it saves you a lot of time. You can just, uh, you want the green to be more yellow, you can just then add yellow to the green. But it's a very good starting point uh, for a green color. The other green that I like is um, Thalo Green. Uh, in this case, this Thalo Green is actually from Winston and Newton. I do not have the Daniel Smith Thalo Green. I'm trying to use up this one from Winston and Newton currently. Thalo Green, um, like Thalo Blue here, is actually a chemical uh, pigment. It's very bright and you should not use it on its own. Usually I use it to color the shaded part of trees where it's really really dark so I would use uh, Taylo Green and mix it with a bit of red so I can get some really um, dark darks just to paint the underside of the trees Italian, uh, this is burnt sienna the one that I have is a different version, it's called the Italian Burnt Sienna but it's a very brown color that's very nice to have also you can use this actually to neutralize the green as well let me show you that we have a very bright Taylor green here and then we add some Burnt Sienna to it oops, not enough Yep, let's compare this pure color and this uh, mixture. So you can get a lot of variations when you have a good green to start with. Mine would be sap green and phthalo green. And I think those are my favorite colors. I'll post the links to where you can get them in the video description below. Let me show you some of my sketches now that I have painted with the Daniel Smith watercolors. Now this palette is the palette that I bring overseas for my overseas trip. Uh, whenever I want to sketch overseas, this is the palette that I bring because I'm so used to how the colors mix already. Let me show you this one. This is, um, I think I used some sap green here, uh, lemon yellow. This is of course the granulating French ultramarine. The colors that I pick are all transparent so when you paint it over the lines like this, the lines will still show through. This is, um, yep, I like how vibrant the colors are. 
This is, I made a whole sketchbook of um, sketches just based on the Daniel Smith watercolors. This is uh, not all the colors here are Daniel Smith, but I want to point out this particular color here, which is cerulean blue uh, oxide, if I remember correctly. It has a granulating texture as well. So this is the blue I would recommend you to get in addition to French Ultramarine and Taylor Blue. This is a very cheery uh, blue color that you can use for the skies. These are sketches that I drew in Bali, all using Daniel Smith colors as well. So here I used a lot of sap green for example because if you are going to mix yellow and blue for the green, you are going to spend a lot of time because this is a very huge area of green that you must color. Again here as well, I saved a lot of time with uh, the sap green. And then for the darker areas, I just used halo green. I think I used transparent prior orange for this one and a bit of burnt sienna. Yeah, this is a market scene, phthalo blue and some of the colors which I cannot remember exactly because this was painted two years ago. Those are the Daniel Smith watercolors that I used. I will give you a list of names in the video description and also check out links to where you can buy them and links to some of the sketches that I painted with Daniel Smith watercolors. I will also give you the website to Jane Blundell's uh, 15 colors, the so-called ultimate mixing palette. On her website, you will be able to find a lot of useful information relating to watercolors, especially Daniel Smith watercolors because she uses a lot of them. Overall, I just find Daniel Smith to be a um, very high quality brand. They produce very high quality pigments. The colors are very vibrant. It's very easy to mix, uh, maybe because of the ones that I personally chose, the ones that are mainly transparent, so they are a bit easier to mix. I like transparent watercolors because I do pen and ink watercolor sketches and I want the line work to show through. That's where the transparency uh, helps. And that's all for today's uh, video and review. If you have any questions, just feel free to post them in the comment section below. And remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'll be posting more art product reviews, sketching videos, and sketchbook features. Thanks and have a nice day.